If you want to learn to fly like this and be a hero, then stay tuned for Dropship Pilot Lesson 1. Over the last 15 years, I have really enjoyed the challenge of mastering the skills that are necessary to fly troops into and out of combat safely. In this series, I want to identify those individual skills for Star Citizen and what it means to be a dropship pilot. In this particular video, we're going to be looking at the TVI and how you can use it to point your ship where you want to go and to pick your landing zone. So let's get into it. One of the first things we need to do is fix some of the disastrous default settings. So we're going to go into options. We're going to go down to flight proximity assist defaults on and we're going to turn this to no. Then we're going to go to flight space break engages boost and we're going to make sure that this is turned on. Lastly, we're going to go to pilot velocity indicator and we're going to make sure it says always on. Before we can do some of the cool things as a dropship pilot, we need to make sure we're on the same page of understanding. So let's go to some basics that I think are important for any pilot. Number one, if you have a little bit of forward momentum, your TVI is gonna have arrows pointing inward. This just means you're going in the direction that you are facing. If you have it backwards, then the arrows are gonna point outward. So again, the arrows indicate the direction of your velocity. Forward is indicated by arrows pointing inward and arrows pointing outward means you're going backwards. Now, another fundamental understanding we need to have of the ship is obviously that our engines in the rear are our strongest velocity control. However, we need to make sure we know what our thrusters can do. This is the Pisces C8X, and if I strafe up, you'll see that we get about four Gs of instantaneous and a little bit less of sustained thrust. Now, if we go down, you're gonna see we only get about two Gs and that is a significant difference in what the ship can do. This will come into play when we actually start coordinating some turns for maximum performance with combinations of pitch, yaw, strafe, and boost. For now, let's use the TVI to line up for a landing. Let's just say, for example, we wanna land at Shubin Mining Facility, which is directly ahead. I will point the TVI at one of two landing pads and adjust between them. When I use yaw, the ship moves the direction it faces faster than changing the vector it travels on. However, if I use strafe, the TVI shows that my ship slides to the side without changing where I'm looking and it stays on vector. Strafe helps to precisely line up the TVI and I don't have to yaw left and readjust right to point my TVI to the landing zone. So let's take a look at our TVI when we're going very slow. You'll see that a little bit of strafe, I can move that TVI anywhere really far, really fast. As I speed up, the amount that the TVI moves based on the strafe input becomes less and less until I'm using all my force on my strafe. Now with some forward momentum and straight yaw, you'll see that the TVI catches up but it catches up a little quicker if you use strafe at the same time. So a little bit of yaw, a little bit of strafe, and you can get your ship to avoid an obstacle. Now you can do the same thing with pitch. So if you pitch up, it's not going to follow the same. And if you pitch and strafe, you'll get a little bit of that movement more like traditional flight models. So if I wanna come down over here, I can use both the coordination of left, right, and pitch, a little bit of yaw and strafe, and get my ship right where I want it to be. But if I want to pull up out of here, it's going to work better if I do a coordination of the two because it'll help reduce the circle and it just gives me more strength in that direction. This time we're going to take a look at all three. We're going to have our forward momentum going. We're going to use a little bit of strafe and yaw and boost at the same time. So if we yaw, strafe and boost, you're going to see that it starts to push the ship where we want to very quickly. At higher speeds, this becomes more important. So we will yaw and boost and get that in there, but then a little bit of strafe. So the coordinated effort is more important at higher speeds. Again, we will yaw, strafe, and boost 
to get exactly where we want. And if we're going at max velocity, you'll see that the TVI is still moving the ship, but not super quick. If you need to do something like get down here, you're going to need to use a coordination of those. And again, I can use this TVI to fly nap of the Earth and choose where I want to go with coordinations of different inputs. You can also use your TVI to center yourself when you're entering a hangar. The TVI can also help you avoid head-on collisions with ships, especially in combat. Keep your TVI pointed away from the ship and you won't hit it. So what can we do with all the skills now that we have learned them? In the next videos, I will teach you to master the skills of being a dropship pilot so you can fly low and fast to rescue your friends and be the hero. Now that we've explored the TVI, we're going to use this skill in the next video. We're going to start off on landing pads so we can see how accurate we are, and then we're going to move to the real world. So follow along and subscribe to this channel as we explore what it's like to be a dropship pilot in Star Citizen.